but if this is a human being and this is a doctor and he is earning this is a human capital okay so physical capital is tangible tangible means it can be easily sold in the market like any other commodity right you can sell this machine right but human capital is intangible as it is not sold in the market you cannot sell a doctor right only the services of human capital are sell like if you are a doctor that you can treat a person and then only i can sell those services if you are a teacher you can teach but you cannot sell the teacher right you can sell his or her services second the physical capital is separable from its owner the machine is different and the owner is different but here the human capital is inseparable from the owner i am the owner and i am the doctor itself right then physical capital is comparatively mobile between the countries except for some artificial trade restriction so you can easily share send this product from one place to another one country to other but for human capital it's not perfectly mobile you need for example from india i want to come to australia or something i need the visa password and everything right so it is basically restricted by nationality and the culture then here continuous use of physical capital leads to depreciation for example i am using this machine day by or every time so of course a time will come where it will be like uh, um, it will be deprived right deprived means like uh, maybe some uh, right some uh, some situation came where uh, this machine stopped working because i was using it to a higher level but in case of human for example i am a doctor today i treat uh, i am doing treatment for two person but tomorrow i am doing treatment for 10 person so that means i will stop working no right so but a age factor is there for example i am 30 years old i am doing it i am 40 years i'm doing it. but when i'll be 70 80 i won't be able to perform that much right because now my body is not supportive right so in yes. case of human capital depreciation takes place with aging right aging but not with the continuous use you will write it you will add it here right but not with the continuous use clear yes and then uh, physical capital creates only pri private benefit so because of this you are getting benefit you are selling the printed thing and then you are getting selling but here human capital benefit not only the owner but also the society in general right over here the person who has the printing machine he is getting the benefit right but over here the person who is doctor he is getting the benefit because he is earning the money plus the people around us the society is also getting the benefit right yes ma'am Okay, so you can just quickly write it down. Difference between physical capital and the human capital. Then one more thing, uh, the thing is that, ma'am, uh, there is a different. Uh, basically, what is the relationship between human capital and economic growth? Okay, so see, if you are educating someone, right, that person first of all, what is economic growth? So economic growth means increase in real capital and income, right? So for example, this is a person A, this is person B, right? You educated this person. He is a doctor now, so he is earning hundred rupees per month. so he is contributing to the national income but this person he is not earning so he is not contributing so he is contributing only then because of human capital there is a economic growth right yes ma'am so investment so what you will write you will write has a relationship between human capital and economic growth then you will write this investment in human capital contributes to the economic growth right see now you, this is the example see naturally the contribution of educated person to economic growth is more than that of illiterate person education provides knowledge to understand the change in society and scientific advancement thus facilitate invest inventions and innovation right because of educated person there is a technology advancement and everything right and plus the availability of educated labor force facilitates adaptation of new technology so for example i have the new machine a person who is educated he can easily adapt it right and similarly if a healthy person could provide uninterrupted labor supply for a longer period of time then health is also an important factor for the economic growth clear yes ma'am okay so first of all you will write difference between human capital and uh, this physical capital and human capital okay okay all the points first point you have to write completely second point completely third completely fourth one till here and from here aging but not with the continuous use you have to add here Okay. Okay. Until here. Until here.
Dan. Nanan. Now, next you will write relationship between human capital and economic formation. So you will write investment in human capital contributes to economic growth and these two points. Ma'am, can you explain this part? Yes. Uh, so basically economic growth, what does it mean? Like economic growth is basically uh, when your money comes, right? For example, this is one literate person, one is illiterate. This literate person is earning and because of this, he is contributing to national income. Okay, so what is the relationship between human capital and economic growth? If you will invest in human capital, it will automatically lead to economic growth. Right. So over here, see, naturally, the contribution of educated person to economic growth is more than that of illiterate person. Right. Because of education, you get proper knowledge about things and scientific advancement. And because of this, you can facilitate like because you are educated now, you can facilitate inventions and innovation. Right. And plus, for example, you have your co company over there, you have machines. So if you will hire an educated person, then it's very easy to, you know, uh, educate, like tell him about the things and everything as compared to others. So he can easily adapt to new technologies, but an illiterate one cannot. So basically, if you will form human capital, that will automatically lead to economic growth. And similarly, a person who is healthy, okay? For example, a person he is skilled and the other person is also skilled. So if he is not healthy, he will be absent. He will be taking regular leave and everything. So he won't be able to contribute in the economic growth, but the person who is healthy, he will be con able to contribute in the economic growth. Clear? Yes,
Dhamma. Halima, you are also done? Done, ma'am. Okay. So let's just start with the next topic, which is basically hmm, this. Problem facing the human capital formation. What are the problems human capital formation is facing? First is high growth rate of population, right? So continuous rise in population has adversely affected the quality of human capital. It has reduced the per capita availability of benefits of economic growth. Benefit of economic growth relating to housing, hospital, and education have reduced due to rising population. Okay, so over here, what is happening? See, for example, earlier you have two hospitals. Okay, so the population was maybe 200. Okay, so at that time, 100 people will here or 100 people will be here, but now the population is 400, but you have only two hospitals. So because of high growth of population, what is happening? The, the uh, human capital formation is very much difficult, right? Then migration. So migration is basically what is happening over here. See, right now, the my, loss of resource in terms of brain and brain. I am teaching you over here, but you are like, I am, you know, you're taking education from here, but you are working somewhere else. Why I am educating you? Um, why I am educating? Because somewhere you will be, you know, working as a capital formation from our country. But now because of good uh, employment opportunities and everything, people are shifting. Right. So that is also a basic problem. So the loss of resource in terms of brain and brain is serious outcome of migration where the educated and skilled manpower moves to other country to work. Okay. And then lack of proper manpower planning. So in India, there exists imbalance between the demand for and supply of human resources required for different categories. Okay, and in India, there is a poor manpower planning which corresponds to the wastage of scarce resources in this case. Already the resources are less and still there is no management. So because of this also, human capital formation falls down, comes down. Then low level of academic standards. So education facilities in India have not developed as required for the economic growth. There is a mismatch between the requirement of skills and avail available academic standards. So whatever the ninth class student should study, Accordingly, he is not getting the proper education, right? Okay. So because of this also, there's a problem which is being arises. Right. And then next is inefficient system. So there is a way, there is a widespread inefficiency in first on-job training and the off-job training program. Nothing is being provided. Utilizing scarce resources efficiently because of lack of human resource development. Pro Providing proper healthcare facilities and irradiating widespread poverty, literacy, and unemployment. So there's a need, widespread inefficiency in all this. You are not providing all this thing in a good way. So because of that, the things are being like this. Clear? And the last point is poverty. There's a widespread poverty in India, creating lack of finance and awareness and major problem facing human capital formation. Clear? A large population, proportion of population do not have access to basic health and education facility. Clear? So because of these six reasons, human capital is not increasing because population is too much. So I'm not getting proper education and everything because earlier I had two schools. So 400 people were there, but now 400 people are there, but still you have two schools. Then migration, people what do? Uh, people do take education from here, but they start working somewhere else. So they will be contributing to their economic growth, not to that country. Then lack of manpower presence. There is no manpower planning so in india the uh, in india there exists the imbalance between this and this okay and then the second point in india there's a poor management then low level of academic standard so there's a mismatch between the requirement of skills and available academic standard okay clear 
these two points till here and then in insert these three points and then forward clear yes ma'am so you will write hashtag problem facing human capital formation and then the points
ma'am in Tiffin only four points are there. Yes, all the points. Okay, can you share the last point? Okay. Done. Sunny, you are also done? I'm the last point now. Okay, okay. Done, mom.
Done, Mom. Done. Okay. So let's just start with next, which is basically state of human capital formation in India. Okay. So basically, what is if we are talking about India only. Okay, so in India, what is the thing? First thing is that need for government invention in education and health sector. So in India, there is a need that government should, you know, do intervention in education and health sector. Okay, see, education and healthcare services create both private and social benefit. And this is the reason for existence of both private and public institution in the education and health services. So in India, you have government school as well as the private school, government hospital as well as the private hospitals so expenditure and education and health make sustainable long-term impact and they cannot be easily reversed and government intervention is essential clear so first of all the question is the human capital formation in india okay so first thing first is ma'am need of government intervention in education and health sector so first thing is that ma'am why there is a need so first of all this expenditure and education and health make a sustainable long-term impact if you are teaching someone and right if you are investing in his education he will be you know in long term he will be educate paying for your fees and everything is a long-term investment after that you will earn and you will get your money right and hence government intervention is essential right and second in a developing country like ours then you will write india okay with a large section of population living below the poverty line many of many of the people cannot afford the excess of basic education and healthcare facility so basically first is this and therefore second is this therefore because of these two see if i will ask you uh halima and sanya tell me uh what is the state of human capital formation in india so ma'am you will say ma'am uh india needs government intervention in education and health sector right if that's an enough answer okay but if i'll ask you why government should why not an other sector why only in education and health sector so you will give the reason that okay ma'am because of this because health and education sector they have a long term impact plus the second one is like in country like india people are living you know we will below the poverty line and they cannot so instead of us you will write they okay they cannot afford the excess of basic education and healthcare facility therefore government should do interventions and invention in these fields Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you will first write, you will write hashtag capital formation, a state of human capital formation in India. Okay. Then you will write this. The, you will write there is a need for government intervention in education and health sector in India. What you will write, there is a need of government intervention in, ed in education and health sector in India. I, I means in India. My writing pad is not working today, so like this. Okay, clear. And then you will write uh, next point, hashtag, why there is a need for government intervention in education and health sectors. Okay, then you will write first and second one. Clear? Yeah. Okay, write it down.
Okay, girls. Uh, what you will do, you will take the screenshot for this because I have a session to attend. So you will till where you have written. Ali Masana, till where you have written the first point. Okay, so you can take the screenshot of this. Okay, and you will cover it after the class. Okay. I'm only the blue marked ones, right? Yeah, this blue mark. And for here, second point, but here instead of arts, what you will write, you will write India. Okay. And